Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment. Today we are talking about this thing. Can you tell that it's moving? Look, look, look. The camera's moving. The camera's moving! Because I got the Edelkron Slider 1 with the motion module all cooked up, all running, all functional. Although it has given me a couple of hiccups, but it's been awesome. So here's what we've got. Let's switch to the wide camera and you can see there's the camera you were just looking at me through and you can see the slider moving, cranking along ever so slowly on a nice slow push. So it totally works. This thing is awesome. Now, I, as I'm saying, it totally worked literally seconds before I went to start the broadcast. I started getting errors on the device saying, uh, uh, what did it say? Oh, slow down, slow down the slider or take some weight off of it. Now, there is no way that this tiny little GH4 is past its weight capacity. Um, so I'm not quite sure why it was giving me little wonky errors. Per look at that. There we go. Slider error. Well, here, let's just uh, jump right over and take a look at that because this is important to see. Slider error. Unable to complete the slide with the required settings. Please try decreasing the slide speed or remove any unnecessary weight from the camera. Well, there certainly is not unnecessary weight on this camera. It is center of balance. Center of gravity is quite nicely positioned over it. So we really don't know why it's complaining. Um, but let's just take a look at some of the things you can do with this guy. So first off, let's do a quick pick up and show it. Rarg. So here's the whole thing all in place. This extra arm here is the extra arm that I, um, that I showed you yesterday for putting the camera in, can position it, tilt it, crank it, whatever. It's pretty awesome. And it spins. It's actually a really nicely designed piece. Well, that's funny. I just noticed it says patent pending in monstrous letters on the side on there. Um, but this is a really nice camera support, totally independent of the rest of this. So uh, you can attach it to a tripod. You can actually use it just sitting on a tabletop on its own. But this little support arm is pretty slick. I like this guy. OK, so now the slider. So the slider is two parts. Yesterday, you saw I was trying to figure out how to put the two parts together. As soon as I cut off the live video, I said, OK, you know, I'm going to watch the manual video. Uh, OK, you do actually have to take something apart. There's a, a little plate on the bottom, two screws, undo that, and then it all slaps together. So super easy to do, but you do have to get out your screwdriver. Totally fine. Keep those parts because you don't have to have the motorized base. Remember, you can use the slider on its own just manually. If you just want to gently push the camera manually to do a slide, you can do that. And this has got all kinds of tension controls and so on to make it a nice, ensure that you get a nice smooth movement. So that's pretty cool. But of course, the motorized base is where the fun is at on this. So that's what's on here now. So this whole piece right here, there, that is the entire kit, motorized base and all. It is um, totally reasonably sized. I mean, easily fit into your camera bag. Uh, not super lightweight. It is very heavy duty, so it does have a little heft to it, but that's good. We want this thing to be solid and sturdy. This is not, we're not looking for portable, super uber lightweight gear here. We're looking for something that works and is rock solid, but will fit in your bag. So that all said, let's put this thing back down here and let me show you what you can do inside of the app. So let's take a look at the app itself. This is a really interesting configuration. So um, unfortunately, I can't do my normal side by side here because the app doesn't work in portrait mode. So all you're going to see is a slice, the center cut of the screen, which is obviously not good. Um, I didn't set up a different total. Oops, wrong one. Didn't set up a totally different preset to um, be able to show the landscape phone and this camera. I didn't have time for that, but we will look at the iOS interface itself. So here's what you have uh, on the right is the speed control. That's kind of your primary control here for how long it's going to take from slide to A to B. And you see you have a big knob on it. You just grab that knob and you turn it. And you can see as I change the speed, if I go all the way down to the slowest, let's go down to 0.1. You'll see the duration is 1851 seconds. If I crank it all the way up to 100%, it will be a six and a half second pull. Now that six and a half seconds is going to take to go from A to B. If you look down at the bottom, you'll see there's a set A and a set B. As you, let's see here, it is in position A right now. So as I tap on set A, I don't know if you can hear that, the, the I guess it was in position B because I'm just, I've just moved it in there. Um, oops, my macro, my, come back here. There we go. I just moved it. So let me do this again. I'll hit this, I'll hit set B and I hit set B and the camera moves into position B. Yes, Sean, I know you want test footage. I will shoot some in Mexico. <laughs> um, reading the comments here. Thank you for watching live, buddy. So uh, to set, when you tap the set A or set B, at first it goes to that position. So right now it's it's now in B. 
if we look back at here, you'll notice, it's kind of hard to see in the UI, but you'll notice in the bottom right where it says set B, there's an arrow to the left and the right to that. As I tap my thumb on here and hold it and drag left or right, look just to the left of that, you can see that B that's moving. So that bar represents the entire width of the slider. And as I'm dragging this back and forth, let's switch back to this camera here, as I'm dragging, you'll see the camera moving a little bit. I'm gonna drag it all the way to the right, so it's all the way in position B, or I'll drag it a little bit to the left, 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 a little bit to the left. So you see I'm changing its starting or ending point. So there's position B. And then I can go and tap on A, and as soon as I tap that, the camera is going to move back into position A. And then the same thing. I tap and drag on the position A guy, and as I drag that, you'll see, okay, you're gonna see the camera move there a little bit, right? As I go back into this view here, you can see the position A is changing. And you can see underneath that, position A, one and a half centimeters, position B, 13.9 centimeters. So that's our starting and ending point, and then it shows the total travel distance in between them. So obvious, simple math there, shows it is now gonna move a distance of 12.3 centimeters. So there's your, your travel distance. Now back up to the top, so the speed at 100%, you'll see the duration has dropped to five seconds because it's traveling less time at full speed, so that's gonna take less time to get there. But as I change the speed on here, as I change the speed on here, we can, make that longer. So if I go to 50% speed, uh, let's go 50% there, you see now it's gonna take 10 seconds. So I can set the speed with that slider, which then changes the time. You can't. You don't change the time itself. You don't go in and just type in the time. You have to change the speed to get it to the time that you want. All right, so you have your A to B, and then there's a ramping thing. So let's go back to the, the iPhone. Just above the main AB, there's a larger AB, and you see there's a little knob on that. And as I move that, that is a, a ramp. So it's gonna ramp up to full speed over what amount of, of distance. So do I want it to have a really slow ramp up and then a fast ramp down, or do I want it to be even speed all the way across, or do I want it to ramp up to the middle and then back down so it's an even speed up and back down? You can totally change how you want that to be. So let's take a look at that through the camera here. And let's go, so I've got, let's see, we're gonna set it like this to start. So it's gonna ramp up, hit full speed, and then ramp down again over the course of, let's make this a little bit faster, um, over the course of seven seconds. That should be pretty good to see. I just go back to looking through the camera and I hit go. Am I in A or B? There, A to B, here we go. And here we go, it's moving. I'm putting up the finger so you can see a, uh, the difference as it moves. So that totally works. Uh, a couple of comments coming up here. Awesome. Uh, Yash, uh, thank you for Photo 101 and Low Life Photography course that you're able to capture a lot better images today. Hey, Yash, awesome. Thank you. He is referring to onlinda.com. I've got a basic photography 101. I have a Photo 101 Low Light, Photo 101 Macro, Photo 101 uh, uh, Commercial Product Photography, all kinds of fun stuff. Lynda.com slash Photo Joseph. Check that out if you haven't. Thanks, buddy. Um, or photojoseph.com slash Linda. Do that URL. That'll take you there. Um, Sean is saying, can you tap in the center of the speed dial to set a specific time interval? No. No, you cannot, Sean. It does not work that way, I don't think. Hold on, what just happened? All right, let me go back into this. What just happened here? Let's go back to the iOS. Well, maybe you can. Let's see. It's weird because it just it brings up the full keyboard. Huh. Well, let me just try. I'm going to... Try typing in a number. I can't actually see the number. Let's type in 12, hit return. No, see, it's just confused it. I think that's a bug. You're not supposed to be able to do that because that has just confused it now. And as soon as I grab the speed slider, it changes again. So yeah, no, you don't tap in the uh, um, in the time thing to set it. Okay, so there's your, your ramping. We looked at that. And then also you have, uh, you can control whether it's gonna move from A to B or B to A and you can loop it, which is pretty neat. So let's go back into, dang it, wrong one. Let's go back into this. You see up in the center of the interface there, it says loop. So right now, let's, let's change my speed again. Let's speed this thing up really fast. So it goes back and forth nice and quick. And we'll actually, um, that's fine. 7.6 duration, six dur seconds duration. So I tap the loop button. And now as that's moving, it's going to, I mean, I'll put my fingers up here. So you got a marking point and you can see now it is moving. It's gonna to go to one end and then it's gonna immediately turn around. There it goes, oh, making sure. Oh, I've got a delay, I've got an idle on there. Okay, 
I don't know where I how I put that in there, but there you can see it moving. Then it's going to move back again. There it goes. So the idle. Let's go back to this. Down in the lower left, you see it says idle time. It's set to two seconds. I'm going to set that to zero. So what that means is once it gets to A, how long is it going to wait before it returns its journey back? Also, this is good for um, for uh, delays in the start. So if you want to say, okay, from when I hit go, wait a minute or wait you know, 100 seconds or whatever, and then start the slide, you can do that too. So if you have an idle of, say, five seconds set on, on either end of it, and you're looping it, it's going to go basically to the end of the wrap, wait five seconds, and then turn around and start the journey back. So that's another five seconds wait, and then it starts the movement, and then it goes again. So that's how that works. Pretty straightforward. Then there is the convert to time lapse button. Now, this in my testing doesn't work. Um, I haven't been able to get this to work. I've shot them a tech support email, so hopefully they'll help me out here. But you tap on convert to time lapse, and then you set your duration for how long you want it to be. And if you set it too short, it says, a minimum. So like this, it has to be a minimum of nine minutes. So you set it to whatever it is and off you go. Now, what I say doesn't work is not the motion part that's not working. The part that I was having issues with is this guy right here. So there's a cable that connects to the slider and then into your camera that triggers the camera. Um, not sure why it wasn't working. So we will hopefully just get that. So I'm sure it's just a, I don't know. Well, it might be a bug. The, the app is buggy. I got to say the app is a bit buggy. So who knows what the deal is there. But for the most part, it's working. And having just played with it, some of my problems might just be user error. Some of them I am convinced are a little bit buggy. But otherwise, this thing is really, really cool. I am super digging it. So what else to show you on this guy? This is awesome. Let's go back here. Let's do a, um, let's set up a different rack here. So I'm going to, so remember, a slider doesn't have to be just left, right. It can be forwards, forward, backward, whatever. So I'm going to position this guy, point it at the keyboard of my computer. Get a nice close up shot here. And we're going to do a push in on that. Let's see here, view my keyboard. Let's zoom in on there. Tilt that down a little bit and focus that guy. So show you what I'm looking at here. Uh, let's focus on there. There we go. Okay, so that's focused in. Oh, I didn't set this thing. So let's start this thing with, let's go back to the controls here. Let's go back. Um, we'll set up a gentle ramp. I'm going to, let's go to the B position. So B is the front position. Um, yeah, that works. B is the front position, that's fine. And so yeah, we're just gonna go B to A. I'm gonna go A to B, so let me go to A. So I'm gonna go to set A position, there we go. Set A position, you see the camera is now sliding back to the A position. Okay, there's A. Let me adjust this a little bit. And change a little focus. Oops. Have it in auto. I don't want to, let's see here, do I have it set to go out? Are you seeing, no, you're not seeing the overlays. Okay, that's good. So there's the camera view. And I think it's all set, did I set everything? I don't even know. And then I'm just going to tap A to B. And off she goes. Woohoo! Look at that. So cool. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Excellent. All right. Uh, questions coming up here. Christopher Johnson asking Would you say the slider is long enough for landscape time lapse? I think so. I mean, I don't, if you're shooting landscape, you got to keep in mind now. Okay. Let me, let me preface this. I am, this is my first slider ever. So this is not something that I have a whole lot of experience with. But with that said, landscape really far away. If the camera moves from here to here or from here to here, are you really going to see that much of a difference visually, right? Like there's the difference from here to here when the object is 10 miles away isn't very much different than here to here. It's just that subtle movement. And keep in mind, you're going to want to have objects in between to really see that kind of parallax change. Um, with all that said, I don't see why it wouldn't be because it's you don't need a huge amount of distance to make a time lapse look cool. The whole reason apparently that they built this thing so short is because they determined that most people only use a short portion of it. Sean, you own a slider. Tell me, do you, you regularly use the entire length of it? Or does the idea of having a shorter slider sound like a bad idea to you? You tell me. Uh, but I don't see that it would be any issue. Frankly, it seems like it would work great. Time will tell. I am absolutely going to be shooting a bunch of stuff with this when I'm in Mexico. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll get some good landscape stuff in there. 
Uh, Sean's also saying, does the slider itself have a variable setting of tension for controlling the speed of movement? So Sean, the, uh, there is a tension control when you're doing it manually. So if you take off the motor, there is, and that is, uh, so I can't put a close-up on here because the close-up camera is on here, but it is right here. There's a little F on here that shows that's for tension, friction, I guess is the F. And so yeah, you can control that, slide that up and down, and then you have variable tension for manual movement. When you put it on the motor, it says specifically set the tension to the lowest setting and uh, the friction to the lowest setting so that obviously the motor doesn't have to work extra hard to do it. Uh, that's about it. So it's got this convert to time lapse and convert to stop motion. Uh, like I said, the time lapse one was not working quite right for me, so that's something you'd want to, um, you know, may take a little extra time to work with. But if you look at their product webpage, you'll see examples of how all this is supposed to work. So at least you can see that there. But it is, um, it is exceptionally cool. I am really, really excited about this guy. So I guess that's it. That's all I really need to show you right now. I'm digging it. All right, guys. Any other questions? You know where to put them. Stick them in the comments. Um, it seems so. We're doing this whole live thing to YouTube again. It took a little few hiccups to get started, but once we started, we are good and solid. What was kind of curious was that um, yesterday was the comments that you guys are putting now apparently don't get carried over, which is really weird. So I don't know what happens. It's like these comments just go off into into Never Never Land, um, which is a bummer. So if you want your answer, uh, your question answered again, you can always enter it into the comments once the video is actually posted. One more thing coming from Sean. I think about uh, how of the shot I'm going to, how much of the shot I guess I'm going to use in seconds. Having a longer slider gives you more options in post, but really a slider shot longer than five to six seconds, five to six seconds is all you really need, in my opinion. Yeah, I think that uh, the Edelkron folks would agree with you. I think that's why they did it this way. And you can set, let's go back to the UI here. If I set this to its slowest speed, let's go not even at full duration here. Um, I mean, look at how this thing goes crazy slow. I take it down to, well, 0%. Okay, let's, all right, let's just do, let's set position A. Let me open position A up all the way. And position B, we're going to open that up all the way. So at 0%, so I guess that's, you know, it's absolute slowest speed. It is saying a duration of 3,110 seconds. So let's just see what is 3,110 seconds. 3,110, div oops, divided by... 60 equals 51 minutes. So that's almost an hour long pull that you can do on here. That's pretty slow. Obviously, you probably wouldn't do a video that way. Uh, but you know, for doing time lapse, whatever, you can do that. So and actually, if you're doing time lapse, it can be way longer, right? It can be days, weeks. Say so you could do an hour long video. That's too long. You should never do something. That long. Who knows? Maybe there's a use for it. Okay, that's it. Uh, that was the last of the comments. I am going to end it with that. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Tomorrow morning at this time, let me see, where will I actually be tomorrow morning at this time? I will actually be, I will actually be, what is this? I will actually be in Oaxaca already. There you go. I will already be in Oaxaca. I will be uh, hopefully on my way to, if not arriving at the hotel. Odds of going live tomorrow at the predetermined time, pretty low, but we're going to see what happens. I will be running some live tests today from the phone. I downloaded a couple of different apps to go live to YouTube. We'll see. If none of that works at all, I may end up going live back to Facebook because at least then I can go live. And that's assuming that I have internet. Otherwise, I will be shooting, editing little bits and pieces, uploading them. We may end up skipping some days just because I am going to be in rural Mexico for uh, the next couple of weeks, uh, about a week and a half. So that may, uh, that may just be the reality of it. Uh, I do have a very exciting conversation. I don't know if you've seen my Photo Joseph's Conversations video. A very exciting conversation that is supposed to be recorded this evening before I leave. Fingers crossed that it works. Only hint I'm going to give you is that it's about the GH5. So uh, hopefully, all fingers crossed, everything pans out and that works out. And then I'll take that video with me, edit it on the road and upload it from somewhere. Okay, that's that. I'm out of here, guys. Take care. Travel safe. Me, I'm the one traveling, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, and don't forget, you got to click on some of these things. So there's this whole, have you seen this video yet? That should be the last, that should be something that YouTube thinks you would like. So check that out. There's the playlist on the top right. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We really do want you to subscribe. Subscribing is good. Thanks. See you later. Bye-bye.